It's great to have all of you here today. Thank you for joining us at mongodb.localnyc. It's fabulous to have all of you here today. Um, I know all of us have lived in the world of Zoom, and, uh, uh, but I have to say there's no substitute being able, for being able to get together in person, to meet old friends, reconnect with new ones, share war stories, and we, boy, we have a lot of news to share uh, today. So thank you for making time. Thank you for uh, uh, spending the day with us, and my hope is that by the end of today, you'll say that this day was incredibly valuable. Uh, before I begin, I want to take a moment to uh, acknowledge, um, I want to make, uh, take a moment to acknowledge our uh, global sponsors, AWS and Google Cloud. Um, this is actually uh, truly a global business, and so this is a start of a tour that we're doing essentially across the world. So we're gonna be doing 26 more of these in 26 different cities, places like Sao Paulo, and Sydney, and Milan, and Frankfurt, London, you name it. And so if you're, uh, if you're on the live stream today, uh, please check the schedule because we might be in your backyard. And I said, there's nothing better than being able to uh, do this face to face. Um, but I do want to acknowledge AWS and Google Cloud who are sponsoring this event and also because as the name connotes, they're actually sponsoring the whole global tour. So my thanks to AWS and Google and please take time and the partner pavilion to go by their booth. Now let's get the show started. Our, um, for those of you new to MongoDB, or you may need to uh, maybe remember, our mission is truly to enable or empower innovators to create, transform, and disrupt industries by unleashing the power of software and data. Now, you might be looking at these words and saying they, they seem like nice words, but what does that really mean? Well, the word innovators is all about people in this room and developers all around the world who are trying to use software to transform their organization, their business, or maybe their own industry. And basically, um, just creating, transforming, or disrupting industries is all about impact. We want developers to have the biggest impact they can by the applications that they're building. And the question you have to ask yourself then, or we ask ourselves, is where do developers spend the most, most of their time to have the in biggest impact they can? And clearly, where they spend the most time is working with data. It's estimated that an average developer, depending on the application they're building, spends anywhere from 30 to 70% of their time working with data. When you, and then when you think about impact and how can we impact developer productivity, then the obvious answer is make it easy to work with data. And this has been essentially our North Star as a company in terms of the products we're building, the features we're thinking about, the capabilities we're introducing, Everything is all about making it incredibly easy to work with data. And that started with essentially our database. It was the first database designed by developers for developers. And the focus was all about developer experience. We wanted the database to get out of the way of the developer so that they can do great work and be able to build the applications that their business needed or what they were trying to do in terms of the impact that they were trying to have in their organization. And obviously, to do this, to create such a compelling developer experience, we needed to use a different way, and that started with the document model. The document model and distributed systems fundamentally underpins everything about MongoDB. And as, as we've seen, MongoDB became incredibly popular. But I would be remiss in not acknowledging that there were a lot of skeptics who said, yeah, this is cool technology, but no one's really gonna trust their crown jewels, those mission critical applications to MongoDB. Um, <clears throat> and so we listened to feedback, we talked to lots of customers, and we chipped away at the features, think of building things like tunable consistency models, transaction guarantees, uh, and enterprise grade security and management features. And over time, customers started building incredibly sophisticated and demanding applications. In fact, today, we have over 43,000 customers, um, some of the largest companies in the world, to cutting edge startups you've never heard of, who are using MongoDB to run their business. Just to put things in perspective, in the last year alone, we had 1.4 million users sign up for our free tier. So these are not even customers, but we're priming the pump for the next generation of prospects that we hope that will become customers one day. And we have over 1,000 partners, both technology and service partners, who have this, so there's this rich ecosystem uh, of partners out there to help customers get value out of MongoDB. And 
I would, I would also like I have to acknowledge that one of the big drivers for our business was the cloud. Um, the cloud fundamentally redefined and transformed how applications are built and how applications are run and managed. And in response, we launched something called MongoDB Atlas. But unlike most other companies who just offered a, you know, a cloud service, we, we want to do something fundamentally different. We want to do something that really had a lot of value and was really unique. So we introduced the industry's first globally distributed data platform. So with one unified and seamless interface, you literally can deploy data anywhere in the world across AWS, Azure, and Google uh, um, in an elegant manner. And that's something no one else offered. Now, as you can imagine, there was also some skepticism about our ability to be successful in the cloud. People said, so you're gonna partner and compete with the cloud providers? And oh, by the way, multi-cloud, that's really a nice check in the box exercise, but customers don't really care about multi-cloud. Well, it turns out they did care. And we now have 40,000 developers every week signing up for Atlas. And we have customers in over 100 countries around the world using Atlas to run their business. So just to put things in perspective, Atlas is the most widely available data service on the planet today. Uh, it across, runs across 110 regions across AWS, Azure, and GCP. So we offer customers incredible choice, diversity, resiliency, and scale. And this coverage model is only growing. But we didn't just stop there. MongoDB is the only ISV that is on the management consoles of all of the three cloud providers, Amazon, AWS, and GCP. And we have deep technical integrations with a lot of their products and services that they offer on their clouds and strong partnerships on the go-to-market side as well to make it easy for customers to use MongoDB as part of their ecosystem. And so clearly the cloud has been incredibly popular and really been good for MongoDB. But with all this popularity, there's been some trade-offs. Essentially, we have unleashed more innovation, but it started to create more complexity and more cost in terms of people's data architecture. And let me explain. So as the increasing sophistication of applications basically happened, people, there was an explosion of point tools to basically serve a large variety of needs. Um, <clears throat> and the problem that's created is there was this interdependency between all these point tools and these applications, adding more complexity. But that's not all. Then you had your, your customers were everywhere because of mobility and fast and cheap data networks. So you had to distribute the data to a wide variety of deployment models, whether it's your data center, the cloud, the edge, embedded devices, mobile, you name it. So when you look at this, this whole approach makes your data architecture harder to manage and more costly to run. So we said there's gotta be a better way because this is not sustainable. That's why we introduced MongoDB's developer data platform. So our approach is to radically simplify the data architecture where you get one unified, one elegant, and one intuitive experience to work with data to address not only a wide variety of use cases, but also a wide variety of deployment models. So instead of bolting on a bunch of point tools, you can leverage MongoDB for OLTP use cases, time series, full text search, in-app analytics in a seamless and unified way. So it makes the developer experience so much better. And back to my point, making it easy to work with data. So you get all the benefits of the cloud, but you can do it at a much more effective cost structure and put far lower complexity. But we feel like we're just getting started. So the real world is not static. Every business is driven by software. People are, are basically building real-time businesses, so software has to be also be real-time. Software applications need to become more real-time uh, as ever. So for example, if you're analyzing streaming financial data to see if there's fraud, or if you're basically trying to optimize pricing on an e-commerce platform based on user behavior and clickstream behavior, or you're trying to adjust um, shipping routes based on real-time feedback from your supply chains, all the data that feeds those event-driven applications flows through streaming technologies. And streaming technologies are rich, they're heterogeneous, they're rapidly changing and constantly evolving. 
But processing streaming data is hard, it's complex, it's challenging, and it becomes even harder using rigid and inflexible schemas, such as relational platforms. <clears throat> so we said, you know what? We think MongoDB is a great fit for this use case. It's developer-centric, it's JSON-based, it's based on documents, so it benefits from the flexibility and scalability that you need for this use case. So consequently, today, I want, I'm pleased to announce that we are announcing Atlas Stream Processing from MongoDB. So using MongoDB, it's going to be easy to analyze streaming data and leverage in your applications. And with MongoDB, you can truly unify data in motion with data in rest. So this transforms the way developers build event-driven applications. So we're going to see what you all do with this as you start using this uh, product. But we're not done. So real-time data is not the only shift. We are witnessing probably one of the biggest platform shifts, uh, platform shifts in our industry, which is all about artificial intelligence. Every boardroom, every development team, every um, executive team, every person is saying, how can I use AI as a competitive advantage? And to us, AI is all about building smarter, and more intelligent applications. We know that developers will be critical to enabling this <clears throat> to build the next generation of modern applications. And with AI, the scale and ambition of development teams will be limitless. So the sophistication of needs will necessitate that developers build it on a modern, scalable, and performant platform. In fact, already we've seen an explosion of AI companies building apps on MongoDB because of all those reasons. In fact, in our earnings call three weeks ago, I announced that we had, just in Q1 alone, 200 new AI companies who are running and building apps on MongoDB. And just to put things in perspective, to our best knowledge, the number's probably understated, but we believe that there's 1,500 companies who are building AI workloads, or building and running AI workloads on MongoDB today. And that number is growing day by day. And moreover, we expect that every new application and every existing application will be embedded with AI capabilities. So the obvious question then is, what's driving AI, right? A big driver, or what's crucial to AI, is called semantic search. Semantic search is, is, is critical because it really aims to comprehend the intent behind that query. What exactly is the meaning? What exactly is the intent? What's exactly the context of that query? And vectors enable semantic search by providing more accurate and more timely results. So the question we ask ourselves is how can we help best help development teams leverage you know, these capabilities to build the next generation of AI applications? But the key point is not only do we need to build the functionality, we also need to make sure the development experience is incredibly compelling, that it's not fragmented, it's not more sprawl, it's not more painful and costly. It must be unified and elegant. So the problem is today's approach is that there's a bunch of vector database companies who are asking you to just add another component to your data architecture. Yet another point tool to learn, another point tool to manage, another point tool to support, which means that there's more cost and more complexity to your architecture. Instead, we believe we're offering a different way. So I'm really pleased to announce Atlas Vector Search that we are introducing today. So with this announcement, MongoDB now natively supports vectors, and we will be embedding vector search into our core platform. So with the addition of vector search, there's only one platform that unifies source data, metadata, search indexes, and vectors in a unified and elegant way. So instead of um, you know, cobbling together tools, our goal, again, is to make it easy for you to work with data by giving you all the tools you need to build these sophisticated applications, tools like stream processing and vector search, but as part of an elegant platform, not as a bag of tools. It's an elegant and interface. And if, you're <clears throat> and if you think about it, this is the way to get all the benefits of these things while reducing the cost and complexity of your architecture. And if for those of you who are an early stage company or contemplating doing an AI startup, we are introducing the MongoDB AI Innovators Program. Uh, where we're going to, <laughs> we're going, to, 
We're going to introduce, um, for qualified companies, up to $25,000 in credits, um, access to technical expertise, uh, access to our developer ecosystem, and co-marketing and partnership opportunities. And we'll share more details on this in the next few weeks. And now, to bring this to life, to really show you how this works, I'm so happy to introduce and welcome to the stage one of our most exciting AI customers to tell their story. Please join me in welcoming Mike Godso from Ada. Hi everybody, that was, that was exciting. I know that our team is really excited in particular about Atlas Vector Search that we just shot. Now I want to talk to you today about how at Ada we're revolutionizing the customer experience with AI and how Mongo fits into that. I'm Mike Gozzo, I'm Ada's Chief Product and Technology Officer. And what we do at Ada and the mission that we're called to solve is to automatically resolve the greatest number of customer service inquiries across all channels, across all languages, with the least amount of effort. And when we do this right, we help companies drive cost-effective customer service resolutions. We help them change the experience they can deliver to their customers so it's frictionless, easy, and kind. And importantly, we help empower the people that deliver customer service and transform them into newer and more exciting roles. We've been doing this for quite a while. We got started in 2016. Most of the team is in Toronto, just not too far from here. I'm in Montreal, a bunch of Canadians, a bunch of Americans um, coming together to solve this problem. And you've probably used Ada without even realizing that we were behind the scenes helping you. Today, we work with over 300 companies, many of which you know their household names across uh, six or seven different verticals. So I mentioned one of the most important things that we believe is that within the next year or two, every company is going to be an AI company. And as Dave just said, we're entering an age where every application experience is going to need to have AI embedded in it. And when it does, it's going to change how businesses and their customers are interacting. Now, we already know just that AI is going to deliver some of the most significant and disruptive innovations the world has seen, the vision of the future we were all promised as kids. You know, self-driving cars and automated disease diagnosis. But where Ada is applying AI is to that automation of billions of customer service inquiries that are happening around the world. And because we spent so much time, right, the last seven years building this technology, We've learned a lot about how to work with the data that is going to power this AI future. We've been using large language models, models like BERT, in production for some time now. And most recently, we've been using an increasing amount of generative AI models, think off-the-shelf product from companies like OpenAI and Anthropic. Now, whether we're using the open source stuff that we are tuning and distilling on our own, or whether we're fine-tuning the commercially available ones, MongoDB helps us really remove the limits around how we're managing all of this information, organizing it, and, and driving it through. And the net effect of this is that we can use generative AI throughout our entire product stack quite effortlessly. We're using it to be able to directly automate a significant number of customer service inquiries, going beyond just asking it to provide the answer, but actually work through multi-step reasoning for complicated issues. We're using it in our analytics pipeline, where LLMs are looking at all of this unstructured data that we're collecting and annotating this information in ways that provide really rich, actionable insights to customers. And we're using it to really replace and change how we're thinking about intent recognition, entity extraction, and so many traditional processes that we were running. And a lot of this is possible because of MongoDB Atlas in particular. When Ada was founded in 2016, just like any startup that's trying to figure itself out, we were obsessed with the velocity of development. And we needed Mongo's document model to keep us moving really, really quickly. And then when Atlas became available, we quickly moved on to it because we really wanted to focus on our business of automating customer service inquiries, not on maintaining services, not administering Mongo. This was a huge unlock for us in terms of sales, uh, in terms of velocity. 
Additionally, a really important feature of MongoDB Atlas that led us to make the decision was the fact that it was inherently multi-cloud. Now today, Ada is exclusively based on AWS, but as a startup, we don't know where this is going to go. We might be you know, days away or weeks away from, from getting a next customer that's going to bring us to Google Cloud, or from potentially getting acquired or having to make a decision that would require us to, to um, have support for another vendor. So having that optionality, not having cloud vendor lock-in was extremely important. And now, seven years on from founding, Mongo underpins everything that we do, um, everything we do at Ada. And we've really seen the product grow and get better over time since those early days. We're using a number of core Mongo features already. Some that were announced today, like streaming and Atlas Vector Search, we're also really excited to use. But um, you know, most recently, chain streams have been hugely impactful for us, where we've built distributed event processing systems that have powered our entire analytics pipeline for, for our bots. We're using continuous backups and cross-region replication to really drive our high uh, our, our RPO targets. <clears throat> We're bringing in multi-cloud, like I said, and thinking about how that database auditing is really helping um, accelerate our velocity of development and how well we're staying close to what we're doing on the database. All of this comes down to the fact that with MongoDB, we're able to really shorten the time and reduce the investment needed to ship new products. Most recently, we made a huge shift within Ada. Traditionally, we've been a chatbot. We've been automating customer service dialogues that are happening over text-based channels. But we introduced a new modality, which is voice. And voice is different, right? Data sets can be a lot larger. We care not only about the transcription of the voice to text, but also about the raw audio data. There's different expectations in terms of latency and performance of the system. Using Mongo allowed us to really recycle the data model that we had built for traditional text messages onto voice. And in under six months, we were able to go from a prototype to production-ready uh, product that's, and that's right now handling tens of thousands of voice calls for some brands every week entirely through the same system that we had built on text. You know, being able to make data be compatible with like, consistent data structures in the process is no small feat. And we're super excited to be working with MongoDB, Atlas, and can't wait to see what else is in store. Thanks, everybody. Thank you, Mike. Um, that was a great presentation. I, I just want to go back and kind of reinforce one thing Mike said. Ada is able to innovate and shift faster using MongoDB. Who in this room and who in the, you know, uh, on the live stream doesn't want to do that? Every time I talk to a customer, no customer about complains to me about innovating too quickly. They're constantly telling me about stories about all the limitations and constraints that prevent them from moving fast and shipping products to seize new opportunities or to respond to new threats. So the goal of this entire conference is to help you build and innovate faster. We have a chock full of information, some really great sessions throughout the day, uh, breakout sessions, customer testimonials, partner sessions, spend time with our engineers, and obviously spend time with the peers here because you'll hear some fascinating things about how they're using MongoDB to transform their business. So we really can't wait to see what you build next. And I want to now introduce our next speaker, Sihir Azam, our MongoDB's chief product officer, who will go into a lot more detail about what I announced, as well as, as, well as introduce some other new things that we're announcing today. So please join me in welcoming Sihir to the stage. morning. What's up, people in the back standing? I am super excited to get deeper into our product announcements, as well as unveil some new things that Dave hasn't talked about. But most excited to meet all of you. As Dave mentioned, doing these conferences around the world is one of the big highlights of our working at MongoDB. Now, all of us know, as we develop software, that customers' requirements and needs are constantly evolving. Our applications are required to be always on, 
highly responsive and low latency. The experience of our applications needs to be hyper-personalized. And applications are constantly asked to be more intelligent and smarter in the experience they deliver. And as Dave mentioned, from the beginning, our mission has been to make it easier and easier to build modern applications by getting data out of the way. This is why we created the industry's first developer data platform, MongoDB Atlas. Instead of having to learn integrate and stitch together a sprawl of specialized data services, you can now build on one unified interface, all powered by the document model, the most intuitive way of working with modern data. So let's walk through how we're expanding the platform and what we've been working on for the last year. A key ingredient to modern applications is real-time data, often powered by streaming platforms, as Dave mentioned. When we think about real-time use cases, it spans almost every industry, whether it's hyper-personalized offers on your favorite e-commerce site or social network, selling you that one item you really don't need but want to click on, whether it's a shipment that you're waiting for delivery on but because of traffic or a delay it gets rerouted, these are all types of experiences that are powered by streaming data. And of course, that data flows through a variety of different platforms. Whether that's Apache Kafka or Confluent Cloud, there are many systems that house this. But being able to access this fire hose of data and make it valuable to a live application experience is still a challenge. How do people typically do this? First, they tend to use a connector. It's a great technology to easily get data from a source to a sink or a source to a des destination. And that's great, but the reality is when you need to have complex transformations or your volume of data increases, that's just not practical. So that forces us as developers to build custom logic and code or bring in a dedicated stream processing solution that can query directly on the stream. Even though this is an improvement over using a connector, this approach brings its own challenges. One, all of today's stream processing technologies are based on rigid schemas. But streaming data is sparse and heterogeneous. This creates a lot of friction when working with data and can cause many errors in data processing. Two, it enforces a fragmented developer experience. You need another driver, another API, something else to authenticate to as part of your development experience, which all leads to even more complexity, another technology to bolt on to that complex data architecture that Dave mentioned earlier. We believe this is unnecessary friction. So we asked ourselves, what if working with streaming data was as easy as working with MongoDB? That's why today we are announcing the preview of Atlas Stream Processing. You will now have everything you need in your, to create responsive applications based on real-time events that live in your existing streaming platforms. Atlas Stream Processing is built all around the flexible document model, the most intuitive way with working with data. It's designed for continuous processing. We've extended our query engine and our API to be able to process the boundless amounts of data flowing through these streaming systems. And of course, it's all tied together with a unified developer experience, one driver, one API, and the same tools you're used to using. To tell you more, I am very excited to welcome Kenny Gorman, head of streaming products at MongoDB, to tell you more. Ten plus years ago, I was one of MongoDB's first customers. And five years ago, I was building the stream processors with some of you in this room today. And over the last year, we've been building the product that we always wanted, the one that we wanted for us, the one we always dreamed of. Let me show you how this works. The aggregation framework has long been the best way to create MongoDB. You create a series of stages, say a match, a project. Then we assemble a pipeline with those stages. And then what we'll do typically is we'll call aggregate on a collection and pass that pipeline. Okay, we've done that for a long time. 
Atlas Stream Processing works very much in the same way. So let's say we're going to have a source, but in this case, it's a boundless source of data, say Confluent Cloud or some sort of self-hosted Kafka. We can now build, let's say in this case, an attack detection system with events right from Kafka. We're going to build a pipeline with just this first stage, and then we're going to run it with some new syntax called process. Here we go. All right, now we see data coming back from Kafka. Now think about that just for a second. We're inside MongoDB Atlas, and we're looking at a boundless stream of data coming right from a Kafka cluster. But I want you to look at something more here. If you see this flag ski, you'll see this is an embedded complex document. Same thing with that IP. Maybe we scroll up and we see one that's a simple integer. This is the kind of data that we often see in stream processing. And this is the kind of data that MongoDB works with seamlessly. Does this look familiar to you? If you've been building stream processors, you've probably seen this kind of problem. And I think you'll agree that using the aggregation framework to process pipelines of data is a natural fit. Let me show you some more. OK, so let's build a more complicated pipeline for our DDoS detection system. We've got our source. Now let's create a match stage. We're going to match on flags where that document exists. Perfect. Then we're going to create a new validation stage. Now, look at this closely. We're going to add a validation stage that says if the document exists uh, and it's a complex document, uh, then we'll pass it to the uh, dead letter Q. OK, perfect. That looks great. So now we've assembled a tumbling window. We're going to tumble on 10 seconds. We're going to match where flags is equal to true. And now look, we're going to group on a nested key on this source IP. And then we're going to return it where the count is greater than three. OK, cool. So let's build our pipeline again of those stages. That's looking good. And let's go ahead and run it again using process. All right, we're fetching it from Kafka. Perfect. Now we see this stream come back. We control C. We can look at it. We see our source IP that's being grouped by here. And we see our tumbling windows. That's perfect. Now, let's write this to Atlas. OK, we have our pipeline, and it's looking good. But we need to add a merge stage at the very end. OK, there we go. We've got a merge stage. Now what we're going to do is connect to the database. We're going to specify the collection and the database name itself. Then we're going to assemble this pipeline, and we're going to put the merge stage at the very end. See that right at the very end? OK, that looks great. Now, this merge stage is very important. This is going to continuously update that materialized view in MongoDB. It's going to be continuously writing the data there. Now we're going to use some new syntax to create a long-running processor, create stream processor. We're going to give it a name, pass the pipeline, give it a validation location, and create it. Now let's start it. We start the processor. It goes in the background. Now this is what Sahir was talking about when he said continuous processing. We can check on it with stats, so we'll see its status, how much data it's been processing. Now lastly, let's connect to the database and see what it's been doing. Connect to the database as we normally would. We'll run a query on that collection. Let's just go ahead and refresh it. There we go. Every 10 seconds, that's refreshing. Now let's look in that dead letter queue. Let's see what we have there. Ah, yep, there's some events. We can process those later. OK, there you have it. It took us just a few minutes to create, develop, deploy a stream processor all with inside MongoDB Atlas. Thank you. Back to you, Sahir. Thank you, Kenny. That was amazing. 
We've had the pleasure of working with many customers in the design process of this new product. We've worked with everything from an agricultural company helping customers optimize their real-time harvests, all the way to an energy provider that's pulling information off the grid so they can react in real time. This is just scratching the surface of what we're working on. If you want to learn more and dig deeper, please join Kenny's talk later today. Now, introducing a stream processing capability into the Atlas platform is just another step in eliminating complexity in your data architecture. But one of the first areas we focused on with this strategy was full text search. One of the things we continually observe is that customers have to stand up a dedicated search database or search engine side by side by their operational database to enable that rich relevance-based search experience. Of course, that means managing another separate piece of technology, not just one, but two, because there's often a pipeline or a stream streaming technology just to keep data in sync between the two systems. Again, more complexity and more cost. We knew there had to be a better way. So in 2020, we launched Atlas Search, the easiest way to embed full text search in your application experience. We allow you to create search indexes in minutes, and then we automatically keep them synchronized with your operational data without any extra plumbing. And of course, we added natural operators to our query API, so working with your search data is just as seamless as working with MongoDB. There's nothing else to add. And the response from customers has been tremendous. I have a couple great examples. One is Albertsons, one of the largest supermarket chains in all of North America. You might have heard of some of their brands, Acme, Safeway, Kings, they're everywhere. Atlas currently powers Albertsons Enterprise Promotions Engine, which is a massive platform. It allows them to give real-time offers to their e-commerce experience for customers that are transacting groceries for deliveries. All of this experience has to happen in milliseconds. With Atlas Search, they were able to eliminate a search engine and an in-memory cache and simplify their architecture. And now they are managing over 50,000 unique products in over 2,000 stores, delivering half a million promotions at any given time to over 24 million end users. Massive scale. Another example, we've been fortunate and lucky to work with Glassdoor. During the great resignation, the great reshuffle, depending on your mindset, a lot of people were inspired to look for new jobs. During that time period, Glassdoor acquired a professional social media platform called Fishbowl. Fishbowl helps prospective employees connect with employees at their target companies to start anonymous conversations and get a sense of the culture and community before they join. For the user experience to be compelling, they need to easily find contacts, find up-to-date information on the status of how things are going in near real time. But prior to using Atlas Search, adding new content and indexing it for search could take days. But by turning on Atlas Search indexes, now their information is updated within minutes. So today, I'm excited to announce a slew of new capabilities in Atlas Search. First and foremost, we're excited to announce dedicated Atlas search nodes. This will bring more scalability, resiliency, and even easier deployment configurations to what's already in place. But of course, we make sure to maintain that elegant and seamless integrated experience. In addition, we now enabled index management in our entire developer tool chain, from Compass to the drivers to the MongoDB shell so you can easily programmatically manage indexes end to end. And last but not least, we're adding search query analytics so you can understand what your users are searching for and let the, get the insight you need to better refine and customize your search logic. Full text search satisfies a wide array of use cases. We all know that it's ubiquitous in many of our environments. But there are times when it's not enough. Matching on keywords limits you to just basically working with text. And if you have a large application, working to customize that search logic with analyzers and custom rules can be a bit unwieldy. And that's where semantic search comes in. 
And as Dave mentioned, the foundational element driving semantic search is vectors. Vectors are a powerful tool for working with data because they can represent real world entities. A song, an image, a video, a poem can all be vectorized as points in n-dimensional space. The various dimensions of a vector describe their characteristics, their meaning, so you can relate things that are similar. And of course, you want to be able to query that in unique ways in a very elegant fashion. It's a foundational element that can be applied to a wide variety of use cases. And again, we've been working with dozens of design partners on this. For one, Okta, a leader in cloud identity and access management. They're leveraging vector search so that their end users can much more easily find the right resource they're looking for. So if they're searching for database authentication, for example, it might automatically find them MongoDB access credentials. Another is an innovative startup that allows you to upload your support call transcripts and your chats to help you identify customer sentiment. This sentiment analysis then feeds back to product managers to help prioritize new features and continually improve. These are just some of the interesting use cases we've run into in the last few months. One of my favorite, however, comes from the automotive industry. Whenever we bring our cars into the mechanic, the conversation often starts with, I'm hearing a weird noise. And so we worked with a top 10 global auto manufacturer on this super cool use case. First, they store all the metadata about their different vehicle types, the years, the models, the submodels, all that information. That goes into their core MongoDB database. They then enable search indexes on top of that data to make it easier for their mechanics to filter out and find the information for that particular model of car that might be coming into the shop. But most interestingly, they take a corpus of the most common sounds that are associated with repeated problems that they see in their fleet and vectorize that in Atlas Vector Search. So this combination of an operational database, a search index, and a vector search system all in one allows their, their technicians to record the audio of a car in the shop and quickly match and diagnose it to a problem that they know is, can exist repetitively. It slims down the process by hours. It's like using uh, Shazam, but for uh, car repairs. Now, vectors can do much more than just improve a search experience. And obviously, one of the biggest trends we're seeing today is the AI trend around lar large language models. Vector databases can often be used to customize the responses from these systems based on your business's unique and proprietary or domain-specific data. This allows you to embed generative AI as part of your application experience. So coming back to my example, my technicians now easy, can figure out what's wrong by uploading a quick audio recording, diagnosing the likely problem. But of course, they actually have to fix the problem. So what's the next step? The next step is to stop these technicians from having to manually search through dozens and dozens of repair manuals on the step-by-step -step instructions on how to fix a particular problem. We're enabling a natural language chat experience that's an assistant for the mechanic that takes all the unstructured text about repair manuals and guides the, the technician through the correct steps by prompting an LMM with the correct information. This eliminates hundreds of hours and millions of dollars in their process for repairing cars if you extrapolate that across all their dealerships and auto shops. We are just beginning to see the power of generative AI and how it can be brought into all of our different applications, whether it's in the consumer world or the business to business world. So we're excited to see where things go next. We're also working heavily with a vibrant partner community that's growing every day. Whether that's innovative startups that are working on the developer experience of embedding AI, or working with our cloud partners to integrate into their new AI services up the stack. This is a dynamic space, and you'll see much more from us in the coming months. We're very excited about the hundreds of startups building on MongoDB, leveraging AI in their existing applications or new applications. To learn more, please join Ben Flass later today for a talk on the power of generative AI in applications. Now, all of this capability 
stream processing, analytics, vector search, et cetera, doesn't really matter if we're not on a strong foundation of performance, scale, security, and resiliency. This is a constant investment for us. Let's start with performance. We are consistently working on improving the performance of our core database engine. And in the upcoming 7.0 release, we focus specifically on query execution. What we've been able to do is reduce significantly the amount of compute resources and memory resources required to execute a query, while at the same time improving performance. To give you a flavor of what this looks like, if you're running a query like a group or a sort, aggregating information on sales transactions, for example, you can see a 50% improvement in latency. If you're running a filtered query, perhaps pulling data back for a dashboard or visualization experience in your application, that jumps to a 90% improvement in latency. But perhaps most incredible, our dollar lookup, our join capability, is now 30 times faster. We're really excited to keep pushing the ball forward on this, and you'll see continual improvement in every single release of the database. Let's shift to security. For years, we've been working on integrations and capabilities in our platform that the most demanding and regulated industries in the world require. Identity management, authorization, rich role-based access control, and of course, encryption. Now, encryption is super critical in all of our daily lives and securing our privacy and data. But typically, there's two forms of common encryption. There's data in transit, obviously, traffic going over the wire, secured by TLS or HTTPS, that little lock on your browser icon, or data at rest. So when data is persisted and not actively being used, we want to make sure those disks or those files are encrypted, and you can manage them with your own keys to keep things secure. But what about data in use? When you're actively querying and using data, it sits in memory, in a decrypted form, in every system. This is what makes vulnerabilities such as side channel attacks, in-memory attacks, unprivileged user access without authorization, or even bad actors to potentially get access to systems. Now, we've been working on this problem for quite some time. In 2019, we announced client-side field-level encryption, which allows you to encrypt key information in your application and be able to pull it back easily with a point query, an exact match. The challenge with that, though, is sometimes you want to search over not just a single record, but be able to search on a broader set of information on encrypted data. And to date, that's been impossible. We wanted to solve that trade-off. So two years ago, we brought in a team of researchers from Brown University and created an industry first, queryable encryption. It allows you to non-deterministically create encrypted data. So the same data is randomized every time it's encrypted back in the database. The server never has access to any decrypted data because it's all controlled from your client with keys you manage. It's specifically meant for your most sensitive data, PHI, PII, social security numbers, you name it. And what's interesting is QE now expands from point queries to equality matches today, and we'll be adding support for range queries, prefix, suffix, and even substring matches as we continue to develop the roadmap. You can try this today by downloading the release candidate of MongoDB 7.0, and we'll be going GA later this summer. Now, it's exciting to be able to leverage all these cool features and capabilities of the platform. It's especially easy if you're doing it for a new application because it's all greenfield. But we all know many of you and many of us have legacy applications built on brittle and expensive relational systems. We've been working with many of you on modernizing these for years, but we knew we could do more to help. So last year, we announced the preview of Relational Migrator, and the feedback has been tremendous. We've worked with companies like PowerLedger, which is working on breaking up their relational monolith into a microservices architecture based on MongoDB. We worked with National Building Society, which is migrating dozens of applications off of an end-of-life SQL Server release. So we're really starting to see the traction pick up and the modernization speed up. Relational Migrator today is focused on three key problems. First, schema modeling. 
It allows you to inspect your existing relational schema, the rows and tables, and use a beautiful design canvas to map and transform that into a document-oriented schema for MongoDB. We then handle the data migration by moving the data from the source system and keeping it in sync with the target in MongoDB. This works both with Atlas and self-managed versions of Mongo. And last, we create sample MongoDB query code based on your schema. So it jumpstarts your development process, can actually help your developers learn how to use the MongoDB query language. Now, we know that the steps required here are crucial as, any, as part of any modernization effort. So I'm excited to announce that Relational Migrator is now GA. You can download it today and start modernizing your relational data and bringing it into MongoDB. But the process, of course, of modernizing legacy systems is complicated. It's not just schema and data migration. You've got to, of course, convert your queries, your, in this case, your SQL code to MQL. And of course, you need to tease apart the complex business logic in your applications, perhaps even change the language it's written in from something dated to something much more modern. But even before the modernization of a particular application, you might need to analyze your whole application estate, figure out which applications are the best candidates for migration from a cost savings and risk perspective. And after you migrate, you got to do a whole lot of testing to make sure that that new application is, provides the same functionality, better performance, and correctness equal to, if not better, than the prior application. We believe AI holds the potential to help in this entire life cycle. And we've already started working on this. Let me show you. One of the key features we're working on in Relational Migrator is the ability to translate SQL code to MQL automatically. There's not a day that goes by that you don't see somebody using natural language or code assistance to help with development. It's cool. But the reality is teasing apart existing code and building a completely different set of queries off of that is much more complicated. We're working to use generative AIs and customized LLMs to be able to pull your source SQL code or import your stored procedures from your relational databases and automatically generate MongoDB queries and aggregation pipelines. It then allows you to detect that code and provide feedback so the continuous improvement in accuracy gets better over time. We are very excited about where this can take us. It'll make it easier for customers to put less effort into modernizing and moving onto a platform like MongoDB Atlas. If you want to hear more, please join Tom later today on his talk on MongoDB Relational Migrator. As Dave mentioned, we're fortunate at MongoDB to work with over 40,000 innovated companies across every industry vertical. Companies like Midland Credit, which was able to easily scale their applications over 50x once they moved to Mongo. Or Rent the Runway, which saw a 60% decrease in inventory processing time when they moved off their legacy system onto MongoDB. But one thing we've learned by working with all of you is that every industry has its unique characteristics, specific ISV partners and application vendors, specific design patterns and use cases, different constraints based on the regulations that are in every different industry. And we have now the experience of working with dozens of different industries and have built that domain knowledge inside MongoDB and alongside our partners. So I am very excited today to announce Atlas for Industries, this is an innovative program that brings together industry experts from MongoDB, our cloud partners, technology ISVs, and SIs together to help you with the knowledge to modernize your particular industry. We also give you free credits. You can test the entire stack, solutions and applications all the way down to the core database. And we're creating tailored university content specific to different industry verticals that enable you to spread the knowledge of best practices on how to apply MongoDB for, say, manufacturing, healthcare, um, or even technology and gaming. <clears throat> now, today, we're announcing our first deep vertical, which is financial services. We've been working with large global banks and innovative fintech companies for over a decade. We're taking all of that knowledge to help you move faster. You can check it out at mongodb.com slash industries and watch this space because we're going to be rolling out industry by industry throughout this year. 
Now, the most rewarding part of my job is speaking with all of you, whether it's here in New York or traveling around the world at other dot locals or going out to see customers in any given city. The innovation that's happening across the technology ecosystem is mind-blowing. I'm excited today to recognize three customer of ours, customers of ours in particular. First, I want to congratulate Radial. They provide an end-to-end -end fulfillment platform behind some of the world's largest B2C brands. Built from at on Atlas from the start, their experience powers companies like Estee Lauder, Calvin Klein, Bath & Body Works, and more. Congratulations to the Radial team. Next, the next innovation award winner is Ford, a longtime leading player in the automotive industry with an intense focus on quality and customer satisfaction. They built a platform called Data Explorer and Transportation Mobility Cloud on MongoDB. It aggregates live information from vehicles and combines it with dozens of other sources at Ford to be able to guide their engineering and design process. Since migrating this platform to MongoDB Atlas, they've seen a 50% increase in performance in their core technology. Congratulations. And last, and certainly very topical right now, I want to congratulate our friends at Hugging Face. They are the GitHub for AI. We're proud to work with them on democratizing the access of AI models for developers everywhere. They built their platform on Atlas where they store all their pre-trained models for text, video, uh, images, you name it. Really awesome stuff they're doing. It's great to see their success. So please join me in congratulating Hugging Face, Radial, and Ford. As Dave mentioned, our sole focus at MongoDB is empowering and helping all of you build amazing software experiences for your customers. We'll continue to do that. You have our commitment that we'll continue to add innovative capabilities that are focused not just on today's applications, but the applications of the future. We obsess about developer experience, so making sure everything sits behind a unified and elegant way of working with data is crucial to the way we help you and we build on industry-leading foundations of performance, resiliency, scale, and security. We have many sessions here today where you can learn all about MongoDB. We also have many MongoDB experts. We're here to get your feedback. Please find us, tell us what you love about the product, where, tell us what you want us to improve. We're all about your success. I wanna thank you all for spending a day with us. Look forward to meeting many of you here today. Please enjoy MongoDB.local, New York City. Thank you.